your trust in God. Friend, God started it in your life and God is going to finish it. You know, you might go through some difficulty. You might go through some hard times. There may be some things that come in your life that really have a way of throwing you off. Maybe it's a long season. Maybe it's like winter months. May I say, winter's not always bad. Good things happen in winter. As a matter of fact, uh, they tell us that, now I don't know how true this is, uh, the uh, snow, we need so much snow here in the Midwest to, to keep the wells and keep the water uh, in the ground. As a matter of fact, if we don't have a, a tough winter, we don't have a good enough harvest. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'm trying to encourage us people that live in the Midwest here this morning. But as a matter of fact, they tell us that our rich black soil is a direct result of our harsh winters. We have more yield here than, uh, than uh, many of the, the surrounding states. So here's what I want to say to you. Winter is not always that bad. Good things happen in the winter months of our life. You might be going through a winter time. You might be going through a dry spell. But it doesn't mean that God is not working in your life. You might be going through a challenge. Something that really hits you broadside. And you'd be here this morning and say, you know, I really don't know where God is this morning. Is God working in my life? Can I be assured that something good is going to uh, be around the horizon? Stay with God. And he will take you places that you never dreamed of. Stay with God and he will bring it to pass the desires of your heart. I was reading in 2 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, John David uh, uh, put it up there. Hey, I appreciate John David. I got to give a shout out to him. You know, he puts up with a lot. You know, he has me next to him saying, turn it up, turn it down, turn it up. Uh, do this and he don't know which way to go sometimes. So we're thankful for uh, him helping us out. But we're talking about keeping our trust in God. If you've been through a difficulty, if you've been through a hard time, you know how important it is to somehow keep it going. They tell us that people that have been through uh, the depression many years ago, or maybe we could say even the, the Great Recession that we call it now in 2007 or 6, 7, 8, and nine, or maybe we're still in it. But they tell us that if you've ever been through a hard time, you have a way of wanting to protect it or protect yourself from tomorrow. If you've ever been through a relationship crisis, it would be easy for you to be protective today and to say, you know, I had it rough. I, you know, the bottom fell out here and I really don't want to experience that again. If you've ever been through a loss of a job, it would be easy for you to say, you know, I really don't want to step out or I really don't want to, you know, experience that same thing again. They tell us that, um, you, I hear many times uh, politicians, they say, you know, and I'm going to transition in a moment, they say, you know, we're in an exceptional nation. They say, you know, I, I hear them on TV, they say, you know, the United States is an exceptional nation. And when I hear that, I say, yeah, that, that, that's, that's true. But the only reason we're exceptional is because of our God. Listen, friend. What got you where you're at today is God. We're talking this morning about keeping it going or keeping our trust in God. It would be easy to, if you've experienced a difficulty or a hard time in your life, to somehow say, you know, I don't want to repeat that. So it would be easy for you to now rely on yourself. It would be easy for you to say, you know, to turn inward and say, i got to protect what I have. I was reading in the scripture here. It says in verse 1, Again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go and take a census of Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab and the army commanders with him, Go throughout the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Bathsheba, and enroll the fighting men, so that I may know how many there are. Two more verses here. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over, and may the eyes of the Lord the king see it. 
But why does my Lord, the king, want to do such a thing? The last verse here. The king's word, however, overruled Joab and the army commanders. So they left the presence of the king to enroll the fighting men of Israel. Some of you are asking, what does this have to do with me this morning? You say, wow, this is an Old Testament story that really doesn't seem like it's applicable to me. Let me dive into it for a moment. This is a story of David coming to the end of his life somewhat. He's been through some ups and downs. He's been through some challenges. And at this point in his life, he said, you know, he said to one of his commanders, go and count all the, 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 the fighting men that I have in the army. Go and count all the, the people that can protect Israel. It was called the, the, the David's counting of, of his army. And it wasn't that that was so bad, but it represented where David was at his time. You see, before this, David went through a hard time. He went through a lot of challenges. At one point, uh, he, he uh, you know, Saul was uh, attacking him. It was his, his father-in-law. He, he had some problems in, uh, uh, in ruling. And things didn't go always well for David. He had some ups and downs, much like you and I. But he was really kind of tired of challenges. He was tired of weathering the storms. And at this point in his life, he kind of wanted to make sure he was secure that the Philistines around them wouldn't come and invade Israel and Jerusalem would be protected. And at this point, he kind of wanted to make sure that he had enough in his army to protect Jerusalem against the onslaught of the enemy. So up front, it would seem like this is not really a bad thing. And we're talking about keeping your trust in God this morning. We're talking about keeping it going. We're talking about somehow relying on God like before you even had what you have today. Listen, friend, how are you going to stay blessed? How are you going to keep God working in your life? How are you going to keep the miracles going, if you would? How are you going to keep the freshness of God? The way it is is as we keep God first place in our life. And in and, and, and the scripture here, we see that what David was, David wanted some security. He wanted to make sure that he had enough fighting men to, to, to keep him out of harm's way. And it wasn't that that was so bad, it was the intentions. You see... What David was doing was he was starting to trust in his fighting men over his God. What got David to the kingship, what got David to the head of his throne was relying on God. You see, do you remember the story about David and Goliath? Who do you think won that fight? Do you think it was really David? Or do you think it was God through David? Listen, friends, you know how you won those fights in the past? You thought it was maybe your education. You thought it was something clever you did. You thought it was the money you had that got you out of that problem. But really what got you to where you are is God. And here's what I'm talking about. We're talking about keeping God first place in our life. You see, I'm not blaming David here. It's just a warning to you and I. It's just a challenge to somehow keep it going. How are you going to keep God's favor in your life going? It's by staying with God and trusting Him. You see, David here had an opportunity to kind of uh, wonder how it was going to happen. As a matter of fact, some try to talk him out of it. And Matt Joab, the prophet, says, what are you doing, David? We know that God has blessed you. As a matter of fact, in, in the verse 3 here, we know that Joab was saying, we know that you are going to be blessed and you're going to have a lot of fighting men. But don't go and count them. You see, what was going on was David was putting his attention in a place where he shouldn't have. I remember my, my father. We, went, we, were in, we have different bakeries around Illinois. And um, I remember him uh, growing up. He tells me growing up poor. Many like m many of our relatives... You know, growing up, we always had to work hard and, you know, went in the Marine Corps and got out and, you know, didn't have a high school education and started from the bottom. 
and really didn't have a lot going for him economically. He went through one town as a bakery and another and kind of moved around a little bit. But then he went to this one town and really hit it well. And I remember, you know, flying to Florida one time. One time I had, I hope it's all right to say this, I had, at a young age, I think maybe eight, nine years old, I had $25,000 in my pocket that he gave me to hold on to. He was drinking a little bit and we were going down there to buy a piece of property. And he tells me the story that how, you know, he really came into it, but he, he, one of his, his friends, his Marine Corps buddy friends, he said to him when he was down there, he says, you know, is there really a God? And my dad growing up as a Lutheran and his mother raising him right, he now began to, for the first time began to ask the question. When things, you know, we, when he had a little bit to offer, you know, is there really a God? My dad tells a story, you know, he, he's very open with us. He says soon after that he found his, his marriage lacking. Soon after that he found that, you know, he was going through hard times. And he don't blame it on that necessarily. But we're talking about keeping our trust in God. Now some of you could look at this and say, wow, pastor, I really, you know, I'm, I think you wish you would have kept Joel on this morning. I really want an encouraging message in the middle of the winter here. I'm with you, but stay with us. Listen, friend, this is a message. This is something for you and I. How are you going to keep it going? You say, I don't have a whole lot. I don't have 25,000 in my pocket. As a matter of fact, I barely got here on the gas. You say, you know what? Trusting God is not about how much you have or don't have. Trusting God is, is a heart thing. I remember when I was uh, uh, the Teen Challenge director in Hawaii for this program. Many of the different students, what they would do is they would, they would, uh, they would try to get on um, disability, and that's okay. But they wanted their check. They wanted to, to say that they were alcoholics or this and, and get their check. And I was the director, and it wasn't that that was bad. You know, we try to help the different ones, you know, get the benefits they needed. But I soon learned that the, their benefit check was bigger than what their vision was for the future. And it was so easy for them to rely on their monthly check in order for them to, to feel secure for what they had. You see, many were unemployed. They, they couldn't get the jobs and different things because of alcohol and addiction. But, but it seemed like, for me, I would say, listen, you know, don't rely on that six, seven hundred dollar a month check. God has a plan for you. Listen, so when I'm talking about keeping our trust in God, it's for all spectrums. You know, this used to, you know, I, I, I got to be a little careful. You know, our nation was founded upon, you know, trusting God. There's a, this is Black uh, uh, History Month. You know, there's a lot of sins in our past. But for the most part, we could say together that we're glad that, that God birthed this nation. You know, there's a lot wrong with this nation. There's, there's fighting. There's, a, there's lots of things. There's our, our slavery. There's lots of things that we could look at and say, you know, that, you know, these are scars. But you know what? We can curse it or we could thank God this morning that he has, has blessed us and we've been cleansed and, and that we are going forward where we're at today. Listen. You know, but when I hear, you know, and I, and I, I got to be, I got to be careful because I, I want to stay on the, uh, uh, the upbeat this morning. But when I hear politicians say, you know, we're an exceptional people, an exceptional people. You mean we're, we're more exceptional from Somalia or, or from, from Haiti for another nation? No, I don't buy into that. And I'm not, I'm not raining on, on the parade this morning. But the only way that you're an exceptional this morning is if you have God in your heart. The only way a nation is, accept, is exceptional is if they put God first. So here's what I want to say to you. You want to be blessed? You want God to move in your life? You want to be first place? You want God to, to help you where you're at? You want God to lift you up? They tell us that George Washington, the Indians, and I, I hope I get this right, they tell us that when, when George Washington, when he was uh, on the side of England, he soon became the founder, of, of course, of our nation. They tell us that the Indians were so mystical about him because they, they would shoot at George Washington at some point, and it seems like the bullets just went right through him. As a matter of fact, they feared him. Now, I don't know much about that. I don't know if it's true or it's just some, maybe they were smoking their peace pipe, the Indians, and, and they, got, they were a little, uh, uh, they didn't see clearly. But they tell us that, you know, uh, that George Washington was, was to be feared. 
You know, as I look back at this and I began to watch some of our history, and, uh, and a matter of fact, when I, when I, when I watch some of our history, did you know black people? They were at the foundation of it all. As a matter of fact, they were, they were there. I, I had tears in my eyes as I watched the, the series, uh, The Birth of Our Nation, and, and how God was in the midst of it. But you know what I see? You know what really got us there? You know what really blessed this nation? Was when we put God first place. And you see, what's going to keep you and I exceptional? What's going to keep you at the top? What's going to keep you blessed this morning is if you put God first. You know what? You've done that. You can know that your week is going to be blessed. You put God first place today. You gave God your, the, the first part of your week by coming to church and worshiping Him. You say, but I barely got here, Pastor. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if I really want to be. Now that I'm hearing this sermon, I kind of wish I would have stayed home and watched uh, uh, Joel on TV or something. No. But listen, you put God first. You have honored, you have, you have come and you prayed, and you say, well, I really don't feel like anything is broken. Listen, friend, God has already sent the angels ahead of time into your Wednesday, into your Tuesday, into your Thursday. God honors those who honor Him, and you've honored Him this morning. You know, as, as, we, as we hear that, those stories, and then it seems like what, what really got us great as a nation was honoring God. What got you that job in the first place? What got you that marriage? What got you those things? You say, well, this don't apply to me because I really don't got a whole lot going for me. Friend, you got much more going for you than you know. Amen. Listen, I kind of think that you ate some food today. You say, you know, but I'm not where I want to be. All right, I'm with you. I'm not where I wanted to be. I wish we had 200 people here today. I wish that I was pastoring a bigger church. But listen, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going forward. You may not be where you want to be today, but it doesn't mean that God's not going to get you there. You may, you may say, you know, I, I have challenges. You don't know where I've been, Pastor. You don't know what I've done this week. You don't know the arguments I've been in. You don't know the fights. You don't know what I had to fight through all week. I understand that. The devil has a way of trying to attack God's people. The devil has a way of trying to bring down God's people. But let me tell you something. Whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, God is there all the more. Listen, they tried to keep the enemy. Let's be honest. It's the enemy that killed Jesus. Really. Let's, let's think about it. As a matter of fact, I know it was the, the people of the day, the, the, the Jewish folks and this kind. They were delivered into the hands. But really, it was the scheme of the enemy. The enemy is trying to destroy your life. The enemy is trying to destroy what God has birthed in your life, and he's trying to distract you. He's trying to get your attention over here and here. That's why it's so important that we come on this first day of the week to honor God. Even if it was hard, if it was struggled, we come and we honor God. We give God our first fruits of our life. Friend, what God has begun in your life, he's going to finish. You know, as we're talking about keeping our trust in God, it would be so easy for you and I to think that, wow, you know, you know uh, wh what's wrong today? You know, as I look at the church services, I'm very glad. I'm very thankful for, for Lakewood's worship, and I'm glad for all the lights and everything. But let me tell you something. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got very little. Now listen, what does that mean? No, I, I didn't say anything negative about that. But here's what I'm getting at. You could have everything, but if you don't have God at the center, you have nothing. You might... You know, I'm glad that Pentecostalism, I'm glad that our type of churches have really kind of grown up. I'm really kind of glad that, as a matter of fact, the largest church in the nation, uh, 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 Lakewood Church, comes from those roots of his dad where, you know, going into the black community and, and raising up out of nothing where, where there was nothing there. And here today, God shines the church. But Joel will be the first one to tell you that in order to keep it going, it can't be on the things, the, the glitter. In order to keep your life going, the foundation has to still be Christ. Listen, you know, we, could, we, could, we can have all the lights. 
We can have all the, the different things. But if we're not praying and, and say, God, come into my life, help me, and humble ourselves, we have very little. How is God going to get you out of your jam? Is it going to be all the different things? You know how God helps you? You know how God raises you up? Is by you coming and humbling yourself before Him. The Bible says this, If my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Listen, same thing with the church, same thing with the person, same thing with things in our life. You need a breakthrough. You know how your breakthrough is going to come? Is as if you go to God and say, God, I need you. I'm broken. I don't got a whole lot going for me. There's a whole, not a whole lot that I have to offer you, Lord. But I offer you my life. That's how you started it. That's how God helped you in the past. And that's how God's going to help you in the future. There's no other formula. Now, now uh, Joe could, let's say Joe, and he's not doing this. Let's say Joe has all the, the, the 21st century gidgetry or gadgetry or whatever you want to call it. Has all the best stuff. But if they're not praying and believing that God is going to touch and save souls, there's really not a whole lot going to happen. Listen, you can have, you can be driving whatever car you want, but if you don't have God first place in your life, you don't have a whole lot going for you. Now you say, wow, Pastor, you're really hitting home now. No, I'm actually talking to myself. You know, it'd be easy for me to, you know, to say, you know, I've kind of weathered some storms. You know, I've been through some things. Oh, I don't got it perfect, but I got it a little better than I used to have. At least I'm not dying, or, or I, I feel like I'm not dying. I feel like at least I'm, you know, it's a little better than yesterday. But at the end of the day, what's going to keep me going is a humility and keep trusting God. You see, every preacher has to wake up. I don't care if they preach to 20,000 or to two people. They got to wake up before at the end of the day and, and Monday morning and say, God, I need you. Every individual, every individual here, you want God to give you that miracle? You are in line for it just like anyone else. I don't care how much money you have or how little money you have. In God, it's all the same. So here's what I want to say. You need a breakthrough. You need God to give you a spouse. You need God to help you give you a promotion. You need God to help you with that legal situation. You need God to, to give you a financial blessing. You know what's going to happen? It's going to happen as you say, God, I'm sorry for all the mistakes I've done. As a matter of fact, I'm not the sharpest cookie in the cookie jar. Listen, Lord, there's a lot better people than me around. I made some mistakes. Yeah. I've done some things wrong. Yeah. But I come to you today yeah. in need of a Savior. I come to you today. I humble myself. I need you to help me. I need you to work in my life. As a matter of fact, Lord, there's some people that are bugging me at my job. Would you take care of them? You want the Lord to fight for you? God will fight for you like nobody's business. Why is that? Because you're a child of the Most High God. You're a child of the King. Listen. Listen. God is your defense attorney. God is your counselor. God is the King of your life. He's your Savior. I want to encourage you today. Keep trusting Him. You know in this scripture, and we're, we're, we're going to wrap it up here, but listen. You know what happened was, David, and I, I don't fault David, I really, I don't even like reading texts like this because, you know, it's talking about leadership a lot. It's talking about these different things. And it would be easy for people to put their trust. Once they get so far or whatever, or once they have a, a little money in the bank to put their trust in those kinds of things. But we're reminded today, whether we have a lot or very little, where we have an education or no education like me. No, I got a little bit. Listen, with God, you're somebody. You're exceptional. Without God, the Bible says we're just kind of like clanging along. It says, you know, without love, without the things of the Spirit, we're just like, we're gone. We're making noise. But listen, but with the touch of God, you're exceptional. So here's what I want to say to you. You want to go far in life? 
You want to run through the troop and leap overall? You want to be at the top of your class? You want to be blessed? You want to be anointed? Pastor Joel's dad was nothing special, didn't have an education. And look at, he fathered the largest church, but was, was he somebody? No, he just had a heart for God. He had a heart that wanted to help people, the underprivileged. He had to have a heart for people to want to be saved and he sowed seeds. How are you going to get there, my brother, my sister? How are you going to get anointed? How are you going to get blessed? How are you going to run through a troop? How are the enemy going to flee before you? As you came to church here, as you came, as we have our closing prayer, you say, God, I need you. God, I love you. Listen, God says he remembers the past no more. We sang about it today. Amen. He remembers the, the, he don't remember it anymore. And he will get you to where you need to be. Listen, you might know me and I was just out at Washington, D.C., you know, and I like Hobnobby. I went to the center, you know, you know, was at the prayer breakfast with the president. I like all those things. They're good. But you know, at the end of the day, I sit there because I am a preacher. I said, you know, all this means nothing. Right. You know, all this means nothing. You know, I like, it's really nice, and I shake their hands, I get the picture with them, and you know, it's, that's all good. But you know what? The best person you can know to help you out of your jam is Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. When I walk away, I guarantee you that senator don't know my name. He's just doing his thing. Huh? Yeah, okay, yeah, and saying what I want to hear. Oh, you know, pat me on by. But at the end of the day, Jesus knows every hair upon your head. At the end of the day, Jesus will see you through. Listen, you started it this way. Let's keep it going. Amen. We're talking about keeping it going. We're talking about, you know, you know, you know, at one time, and now, now I got to, okay, uh, no, I'm not going to say that one. I got to be careful. I can't, I can't give too many illustrations that hit home that make me look bad now. Uh, I give enough bad ones the way it is. But uh, we're thankful. For the Lord's goodness and His Lord's faithfulness. Listen, I don't want you to look at this message and say, wow, this ain't an encouragement. It is an encouragement. Because when we leave today, when we fellowship, we're going to say that we've been in the house of the Lord. We have God fighting for us. We're going to say that we prayed the prayer. And we didn't do it all perfect this week, but we got God fighting for us. We're going to say that we gave of our substance. We're going to say that we sang that song. We confessed our sins. And we're going to leave here today saying, if God be for me, who dare be against me? If God befores me, goes before me, what else should I need? My friend, my brother, my sister, one anointed of God is worth more than riches altogether. I the little I've done in this life, and somebody's saying, yeah, I could tell it hasn't been a lot. You know, I'm with you. Uh, sometimes I feel the same way. But listen, I contribute everything that I have through the grace of God. Amen. Why is that? Because I know that I'm a numbskull. I know that I don't have a whole lot going for me. Amen. I know that there's not a lot. But at the end of the day, God in me can make a way. How is God going to get you that mate? How's God going to get you that promotion? Listen, as you come and humble yourself, as you come and believe the Lord and say, just as I am. Billy Graham, that's how he ended every one of his crusades. Just as I am. I'm not coming pretentious. I'm not coming, you know, thinking that I have it all together. As a matter of fact, you know what the Bible says? Here's what the Bible says. God dwells with the humble and the contrite. Whoa. You want God to take up with you? Listen. You say, not a whole lot of people have taken up with me. You know, I'm, I'm with you. Now, nah, you know, same with me. But listen, you know how? God says God dwells with the humble and the contrite. You know what the contrite means? The awareness of one's sins. You know who God's going to fight for? You know who God's going to raise up? You know you think, oh, is it going to be this great church with the steeple? Oh, that's all good. I'm not raining on that. But it's going to be those saints. They're praying to God. Say, God, I need you. Crying those tears. You want to move God? Shed a tear. Say, Lord, I'm tired of being broken with this addiction. I'm tired of dealing with the same thing week in a week. You're going to get God's attention. And I leave you with this. 
You want God to move? Let's this week. Not look down and say, not what I don't have. Say, God, I thank you for what I do have. You know, Lord, uh, I wish, you know, I know what I'm going to be doing. I know my, how my mind, money, Lord, I wish there were some more people there. But you know what I'm going to do? Lord, I thank you. And now I'm going to get ready for, I thank you for those that are there. And I'm going to pray over them. And then, Lord, uh, and get ready for next week. How are you going to go into your week? Lord, you know, I didn't have a great week last week. You know, there were some trials. But I'm going into this week thankful. And I'm going to believe you to open doors, to bless me, to work in my life. God is on your side, my friend. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Listen, close your eyes for a moment. Is there somebody here to say, hey, pastor, I need you. I need Jesus, I mean. Is there someone here that says, hey, I need God in my life, if that's you? Feel free to slip up your hand just for a moment. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, let's pray this prayer together. Let's all of us pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Please come into my life. Help me. I love you. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, can we? Numbers chapter.